We are the leading operator of five aside. Um, you might be recognised some of our competitors. You might even recognise that you've got council uh, run facilities. But um, in terms of the five aside, the real drive of leisure, uh, we are we are at the grassroots of that. We have uh, now 45 clubs across the UK, and we've got five across the US as well. So uh, there's a huge US expansion rollout. That's uh, football over there is an emerging market. It's um, never really been utilised. Obviously, it's fairly new over there. They've got other sports. So um, for soccer now to become a football here, um, to now become an emerging market, it's really interesting, and we are kind of capitalising on that. Um, and we've got a major programme of investment right now, uh, just going across. We're really, we understand that as a football player, all you want is a good pitch. That's all you want. You want a good pitch, you want goals, you want nets, you just want a good place to play football. And that's where we thought we'd invest most of our time into, which is why we've got ProTurf. It's exclusive to us, you won't find it anywhere else. And it genuinely, I'm not just saying this, played on it every Thursday night, it is the real place for trying to get as close to grass as possible. So a little bit about myself before I move on to that, I just had to plug, obviously, the business there. Um, I have been with Goals for about three years now. Um, before that, I was a, a trainer for a, a retail company. And before that, I was one of the guys that would stop you in the middle of the street and ask you who did your gas and electric. So, <laughs> yes, we were hated, but it gave me you know, great experience to really understand um, how people react to marketing, um, how people interact to the way that a business or a brand projects themselves um, to, to the customer. So, again, a little bit more about us to give you a bit of a feel about the customer base. We've got 140,000 weekly players. We are all FA approved, which means that you can come down knowing that the facilities are to the highest of standards. We have 4,500 leagues across the UK, um, and we've all got over 500 pitches as well, ranging from the likes of well, five aside to even 11 aside. And strangely enough, there is a couple of eight aside pitches out there too. So a very diverse audience, as I'm sure you would agree. Now, social media. So we use our loan a completely different kind of way. Um, we use it more so for marketing. Recently, we're now looking at the customer side um, and really trying to implement sort of customer interaction. But for us, and mainly as a, as a focus driver, we really wanted to use some sort of tool to market online and, and get goals out to the wider audience. So these are just a few quick stats. I won't go into this because I'm sure you guys will have much better stats than us and I'm just embarrassing myself here. But one of the ones that um, were really interesting, we'll touch on later, is one in three players also playing an 11 a side match, whether it's amateur Sunday League football or whether it's, you know, just just professional or a professional player. And um, we've got a couple that still train with us, um, which we'll come on to later when I discuss content. Football as a whole, 77 million times in the whole of 2018, football was mentioned. Now, these stats are a wee bit skew. I can tell you where I found them. I just Googled some football stats, and this is what I got. <laughs> I've obviously quoted some there. Find it later if you want. But yeah, um, 77 million times. So football clearly is a market. There's a market there for people to talk about it. There's a, a market there to, to, to play and still kind of get involved, even though it's such an established place of um, sport. But women's football, it's the World Cup this year, and people are talking about it, yet... How do you project that message? Through social media. We need a tool to capitalise in the World Cup this year. And it's, you know, we look at last year and uh, we, were, we were all over it. You know, there's a couple of content slides later on what we did for it, but we were all over it. We were like, yeah, this player's doing this. We, were, we had a wee bit of guerrilla marketing. We were jumping on the techniques. Um, we were jumping on trends. And then women's football came along and a lot of people weren't speaking about it as a World Cup year. But it, but it is. It's, it's, still, it's still the World Cup. So... I'm sure you see, I think you see this layer. You can have a look through these stats, fun stats if you're into football. If not, then you can skip this slide. Anyway, why we use Orlo uh, for marketing. So mainly, as I said, we're a multi-site operator. We're a one-man team for marketing, but we're not really a one marketing team. We've actually got three managers in each club. That's three people times 46 that can look after social media and Again, I'll speak about content there, but this was it was really important for us to allow the clubs to be able to schedule content ahead of time. You know, I've I've been a manager before, and that's where I came from originally. It goes, I started off as a, as an assistant manager there, and it's busy. I, 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 it is busy. You've got finances to deal with. You've got local partners. You've got your customers face to face. You've got a team to manage. You've got somebody complaining that their kids' party didn't go to plan, and you need to deal with them. And then you've got 
a pitch that apparently the turf has somehow come up. It's really busy, and for a lot of clubs, social media isn't seen as an important aspect of their day-to-day -day routine. So we needed a tool that enabled the clubs to get ahead of the game, excuse the pun. Analytics, we'll touch a wee bit more on that later, but strategic opportunities allowed us to focus on that football element. Like I said, football's so, so fast. Everything happens like that. So we had to be on top of the game again, and uh, social listening and strategic opportunities uh, tie in together. But again, communication. Um, is really key and that's actually what we're touching on later on um, and we're really trying to tap into now how we tie in our marketing plans but also with the customer service side. <coughs> Just a couple of uh, kind of pointers I wanted to make away of here. Um, obviously we've got social media, we've got a load of digital options across uh, the app, the websites uh, constantly changing, we've got kiosks, you know technology for us is, um, is really becoming the forefront of our business We've got an um, email database there, we've got some customer booking confirmations and SMS. And again, all of these tie into the one platform and we needed something in place that really allowed us to tie everything here together so that the clubs could focus on the important things. You know, maybe important to me is social media, but for the, the guys at the club level, you know, it's about speaking to customers face to face, speaking to those local partners, dealing with that kid's party that's, that's annoyed. Now, I don't know if anyone's, uh, if this will be interesting to a lot of you here, but come, how, how, do you, how do you engage people that aren't interested in social media? And how do you get them to understand the importance of marketing as a social media tool? You know, we've got guys that are, they still look at flyers and think that's the best way forward. They still look at a poster and think that's the best way forward. And by all means, they're completely correct. You know, that's... That's definitely a good way to market, but you know, social media, don't don't just disgruntle it because you think you just use it as a as a sort of just to speak to your friends. It should be there as um, a really a formal tool and part of your marketing marketing plans. Um, so what we do is we compare one another. We don't say a, a competitor. I feel you know the likes of um, the the council estate and say right that is your competitor. We're going to market against them. That's going to be your benchmark. No, what we do is we do enter. Uh, in-house competition and we allow the clubs to compare one another to then reach the benchmark. We'll come to that so shortly. We score based on relevancy, so we don't say that was a good post, so yeah, well done, that's what you should be doing. We don't base it on, yeah, you've got one post that's got a thousand people that have saw it, but you don't, but you've posted five times and it's all terrible. We score based on one metric and uh, try and create an engagement score. It gives us better insights for the whole of the estate. It means that competitions are fair because each of the clubs have their own individual um, issues, but they also have to deal with the same day-to-day -day activities. So it means that the competition is fair, and then it allows us to future develop. Um, we do a lot of in-house training for those that aren't quite familiar with social media, um, and it allows us to use those clubs that are performing well and say, listen, this is what these guys are doing. Why don't you replicate it? It's not, it's not that difficult. And there's a wee snapshot of how it is we, we, uh, we run this. So we use engagements uh, for service level agreements. We use all those reporting features on messages. And uh, we score against the top 10 and the bottom 10. So what this allows us to do is say, OK, Hull, you know, you're responding quickly, efficiently. You're, you're really making the most of your social interaction here. You're, you're making sure that these inquiries are dealt with instantly. Northampton, guys, what's happening here? You know, have you had a review of your messages of late? Have you, you know, do, do you use it? Is there, is, is there something we've, we've missed out in terms of training or though? And um, then what happens is we get the feedback from the club and they say, listen, you know, we don't really know what's, we, we don't know how to use the platform. Can you show us again? Can you please run through our refresher course? And we go, fine, that's okay. Here you go. Here's what Hull are doing. We get Hull into the call. The manager who looks after social media will discuss that with the team. They'll share some best practice. And lo and behold, Northampton were out of that bottom 10. And they were somewhere in the middle. I don't know. But they were eventually at the top 10. It's just that recycle, just refreshing, just keeping the guys engaged and saying, look, someone on a very similar level is able to do the same um, with the same problems that you may have or the same, um, the same kind of... I'm not really sure, just the same kind of day-to-day -day activity, and they were able to, to work alongside each other. And the next, for me personally, as our 
market and engagement stats. So we use Facebook and Twitter, uh, Instagram, and um, yet to be involved, maybe something in the pipeline, get some analytics there. But um, for Facebook and Twitter especially, um, we like to again adopt this strategy of the top 10 versus the bottom 10 and use them to compare one another and then provide feedback based on uh, the scoring that's right in front of you. Again, another, what we do um, from this, that's the local side. So this is what we will show at ground level at the clubs to say, listen, let's keep improving. Let's keep engaging each other. Let's try and keep improving from the ground up. But from a sort of head office or a national point of view, we will then review um, each of these metrics as, a, as an individual. And set, we've set ourselves some KPIs here. Um, and this will then work alongside our marketing strategy going into 2020. So again, all of these are pulled through Oral. We'll take this off. And we then metric this against, you know, the likes of last month or in the monthly change versus last year, this time last year. Now, you might be thinking, well, you know, how can you compare one month to another month? Haven't you got campaigns there? And, you know, you might be right. Our January campaign was there. We had massive influx of activity. February died down. March sky died down. Then the next campaign ramps up and we can see that boost again. But what that allows us to do is say, right, okay, how do we keep the momentum? When does the momentum drop? Right, it drops at this period here. So what we're going to do is we're going to push the either the campaign back a wee bit longer, or we're going to try and wrap, do something individual. We're going to have a sort of, um, I don't know, I, I, we did a short app campaign in the middle of um, between our summer and January campaign. So actually February and March of this year, um, we're able to promote one of our products uh, quite 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 quickly, quite simply, um, but it also kept our social uh, interaction quite high and our engagement quite high. Now, content, the fun bit. Now, I've bored you with all the stats. So, content, we have to rely on our clubs. You know, we can create a suite, and I'm sure I don't know if we've got any um, designers in here, but we can create generic content. That's easy. You know, that's we could do that in our sleep. It's what's going to resonate with the customer. Problem number two, as every customer is different, and every local community is different. So what we do is we allow the clubs to try and generate their own content based on feedback from other clubs. As I said, we've got that performance based where we review each other and we try and encourage each other to do better. Um, but we also have to rely on the club's knowledge of their local community. I'm not from Leeds. I don't know how Leeds react to certain posts. I can look at social media and numbers will tell me one thing, but I really don't know what the customers that are walking into that club every week want, what the manager does. <laughs> And that's where the tools are needed to put in place for that club to perform well. Um, so you can see here, we've got Liverpool North. Liverpool North they had a YouTuber come down and they ran, we've got a product called Pay to Play. It's uh, marketed at teenagers and teenagers can come and just kick a ball about with their mates without booking a pitch. So my HD Gamer, a massive YouTuber, came down and, and ran a sort of coaching event with the kids. And it was quite a local community event. You know, a lot of kids come down and they were like, oh, we love you. And phones are out and... Not a ball was kicked, it was just phones, but nevertheless, it was a great a great day. Um, and the likes of uh, Billy Sharp, you know, if any Sheffield United fans in here, top goal scorer in a championship, great player. Um, he runs a coaching facility uh, at our Sheffield club. So what they do is they utilise Billy Sharp's content because he's posting about it. So why generate your own content when you've got someone there doing it for you? Just in a couple of examples, we know um, that we've got great facilities. We've tried and tested different pitches and they've not worked well and we do genuinely believe that ProTurf is the top flight um, pitch that you can play on. So what we do is we utilise that as part of our USP. We, nice, we like to take photography that looks pretty well in real life and give customers real life examples of what it is you could have. Give them a taster of it. If you're not played in it yet, well here's a nice picture. Um, and that's a, a lot of our content strategy comes from real life examples. And coming back to the clubs again, you know, as a, as a content team, we can generate content off our fingertips, but really it's up to the clubs to resonate that. And here's just another couple of examples of what the clubs will do. You know, um, we've got our GMs there on the, the, the left hand side, the right hand side, uh, and they guys were talking about the actual rollout of their, their new pitches. So they were kind of talking about, look, this is what we're doing. We've got a competition on, and they cut in the video at the top right there. If you go into Bradford's page, they cut a ribbon, they got guys who'd played there for about 15 years or something it was, cut the ribbon to their pitch because it was their pitch that was done. Stuff like that resonates well. That's local content, locally produced. You know, we could post a picture about ProTurf and say it's great, but at the end of the day, 
Unless you play on it, you're not going to understand it. But if you're seeing real people do real things on real life, it gives a wee bit of a taste of actually this is real. This is this is really happening. And uh, as I said, we we provide the two, we provide the clubs with a toolkit. So at the end of the day, as I've mentioned just previously, a lot of the clubs just don't quite understand social media. They don't understand the the importance of producing content. Um, and let's be honest, if you're not quite if you don't quite get it, you're not. You're never going to get it. Um, you've just not got that creative flair, and that's 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 fine and well. You know, we can we can show you, we can provide you the tools, and this is something we'll do nationally as we plan for the year ahead. Now, let's be honest, we know what's going to be trending already. You've got the likes of World Environment uh, Day. Um, you mentioned recycling earlier, which uh, we spoke about. So we knew that we were getting rid of plastic um, cups, we were getting rid of straws, we were slush puppies, we were removing the plastic tops to reduce our plastic waste. Where does that fit into social media? World Environment Day. Perfect. Get the message out. And there was about five or six different images that the club could use. Schedule them in, post them out across the, the day, and then utilise this um, in a trending topic. It went down very well. I'd love to have some stats with you. Um, if you do, I can send you on if you if you want to to know how well this did. As I mentioned, World Cup, we were able to capitalise on the games that were there. Um, I believe this was Cavani um, scored the last one, or maybe it was Suarez. It was either one of the two scored the last minute goal, and uh, it was trending because obviously Uruguay went uh, Uruguay went through. Everybody was you know shocked. It was trending on Twitter. So again, we jumped on this. We bit guerrilla marketing, make sure we get out there and known to the public. Can anyone guess bottom right what that might be? No, I mentioned Brazil, really bad tackle. Basically, Neymar, uh, you may have seen the video, memes galore. It was just absolutely crazy. Just uh, basically, Neymar got tackled, he was just rolling and rolling and, and like that. <laughs> but we thought we'd do a bit of a social experiment. We set this up, we asked customers the question, guess who? And that's, you've got customer engagement right off the bat. It was trending, so people were talking about it. Got Game of Thrones, Game of Thrones. Any Game of Thrones fans in here? Yes. Yeah. So uh, we jumped on it. We wanted to promote the app. So we designed the app in Game of Thrones. Very simple. Uh, Archie, the royal baby. Uh, <laughs> we thought that weekend everyone was talking about it. How do you do that? Archie's play free. I don't actually know if any Archies did play, but. <laughs> and. Uh, Yes, we are a, we love April Fools. April Fools for us is a real time to, to if you're a brand in here, if you're a company, you're part of a business, you work in a marketing team, April Fools, you should jump on it. It's your time to be to be fun. And um, we have quite um, that's something we're working on just now, but we have got some really strict brand guidelines, you know, it's very corporate, very much book a pitch, play a pitch, we've got the best facilities. So April Fools allows us to break away from that corporate message and just have a bit of fun, but still keeping within those restrictions that the business have set to protect us. And this is uh, hydraulic pitches for April Fools Day. So we made it, we intentionally made it low scale photography so that people thought, oh, they've questioned, is it real, is it not? Couldn't tell that it was edited. We did it as an aerial shot. Again, people were like, oh, I don't recognize that club. Is it my club? I don't know. I'm not sure, nice pitches though. Um, next. We raised it. It was hydraulic. The message we put the the whole context as um, you know we've installed hydraulic pitches. So now if you are getting if you're if you're playing against a team and you're getting absolutely pummeled, then the pitch starts to rise. So your opposition have a harder game. They have to kick up. So um, what the, how did this tie into our strategy? We had leagues. We knew our leagues were kind of declining in terms of customer interest. So we used it as a form to promote our league programme to say, now it's a fair play. It's now it's a level playing field. That's exactly the, that's the tagline we chose. It's a level playing field. The year before that, we did. Uh, um, we said we were going to install a, a five-a-side pitch in an oil rig. So took an aerial shot from, I think it was Giffy, and it edited one of our pitches on it and um, said, yes, this, how great is this pitch? And we just made it apart and we just said, yep, this is the pitch. This is what's happening. And uh, April Fools, you need to do it. It's, 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 a, it's a necessity. So thanks very much for listening, folks. If uh, there's any questions, feel free. Um, thanks very much. Sorry, uh, <laughs> Corey, before you go on to our final speaker, uh, one over on the...
right hand side here. Just wait two seconds for the green light to turn to. Hello. Um, with the independent sort of football clubs, if they don't use social and if they're not very up to speed, do you find it quite difficult to get them engaged? Like, do you provide training? Sort of, how do you go about that? That's a great question. It is. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, it's really difficult. Um, like I said at the start, you've got guys that just don't see it as a necessity. They don't see it as a tool um, to market with. And I, I can fully appreciate that. You know, we look at how long social has been going, but in terms of uh, realising its potential, just some people aren't engaged with it. So what we'll do is, as I said, we rely on that inter-house competition to make sure that we're, we've got a fair comparison to say, you know, you guys have got the same the same day-to-day -day routine as this other club here, mm -hmm. and they're able to do it. This is how they do it. They manage their time by assigning a social media superstar um, in each club. Actually, that's what we've been recently doing is implementing a social media guru or a social media expert at each club, whether that be a receptionist, a bar person, or whether it is a manager that wants to further develop their skills. What we we'll then do is we then, as a marketing team, we'll take them sort of on a join dot me or a share screen and sort of go through the tools that they have. And then they are fully responsible at that club for managing their social media. And should anything not happen or go wrong, then the region manager, you know, might get involved and might say, right, OK, Corey, why, why have you not done it today? I noticed that um, it's in the marketing brief, what's happening? And then they'll they'll have some sort of explanation and if not we can provide the further training we can say look are you, are you on holiday don't worry look we'll schedule the content for you or here's how you manage it uh, and how it's a wee bit better or here's how you delegate essentially thank you. Thank you. Uh, any more questions before we move on no. oh, one more down in front of you just a question about diversity you, you mentioned sorry Hi. Women's World Cup. Yeah. Five. Orientated sort of presence and, and outlook. I play five aside regular, and you know it's it's just guys constantly turning up at it, and that's all, all you see. How how do you kind of you know go down that diversity and inclusion route and kind of uh, make it more inclusive? Yeah. For, for as, um, so we partnered with LucasAid this year. LucasAid are obviously partners of the Lionesses. LucasAid have been a partner for a number of years now. So we were honest with ourselves. We sat down and looked at our business model and went, right, okay, how many ladies have we got across X amount of clubs? What programs have they got available to them? And how are they going to how are they going to distribute? What's the marketable database there? Turns out very, not not a very not a lot. However, LucasAid have been doing it for years. They've worked with the Lionesses, they've got content there, and really they have the market leaders in terms of promoting the women's game. Uh, ideally, it was great that Scotland and England were both in the World Cup this year. Uh, England more so obviously get further, and Lucas Aid worked quite close with them, so we were able to utilise their own databases and say, look, we are providing 90,000 minutes of free football um, for women to uh, capitalise on. All you need to do is visit here, book your free pitch, claim it. Mixed games where you, we, did, we didn't keep it ex exclusive, to just women playing, you know, if the 10 women turned up or if it was nine women and one guy we wouldn't turn them away because we understood that football still isn't seen as a, an emerging market for women. They don't see it as um, as a, a form of fitness, which is what we're trying to promote, that healthy lifestyle. Um, so, yeah, working alongside market leaders really helped us establish a business model that would work. That's, I hope that hopefully that helps you.